Hi folks, well spring's just around the corner so that only means one thing. That's right, carp fishing baby! Woo! This year we'll be using our own baits on our carping campaign, so I figured I'd bring you lot along with us as I show Raven and Steve how I make my baits and help them to make theirs. So before I start, I just want to say that everything I'm talking about in this video doesn't solely relate to carp. Barbell are designed similarly and have similar abilities, they love a good boilie. Tench, Bream, they love a good boilie, all carp anglers will testify to that, often that they love it a little bit too much. So if carp barbel, tench or bream in your target and you're currently using boilies or you're thinking about using boilies then this is for you. The other thing is I am making this video to pass this information on to my little girls uh, and hopefully any other children that are watching. So I'm going to make my ex explanations really simple to picture in the mind's eye for the children's sake and <coughs> Steve rather than scientifically accurate I'm aiming to get you to be able to picture and understand what I'm talking about rather than to use my examples as a word for word um, explanation to pass a degree, if you know what I mean. Right, that said, let's make a start. If you take time to look at a carp, carp's anatomy, you will uh, perhaps come to the same conclusion that I am. It seems like they're really designed to eat as much as they can, get as big as fat as possible. And they seem to have invested a lot of uh, evolution points, shall we call them, into arming themselves with excellent ways to be able to achieve this. Understanding a little bit how a carp's evolved to find its food will give you valuable information and, and an insight into what produces a good bait. So the first thing we need to understand that is that a carp's best sense is its smell taste. So bait colour comes last of all. Carp's got a good vision, but that only really comes to play once the fish is on top of your bait. So it's smell taste, arguably in equal parts, that's, uh, that the carp uses to detect and track food back to the point of origin. Only then might the eyes come into play to pinpoint it. A carp uses its hardware to detect molecules of scent taste suspended in the water at a rate of a few particles per million. I can't give you an exact number on that because the boffins are still trying to agree what that number is but suffice it to say it's really small. Now you've probably noticed those long sticky down things at the side of a carp's mouth. They're called barbules. Not barbels, that's the fish. Not barbells, that's the fitness thing. If you have noticed them, have you noticed the flaps at the side of a carp's nostrils? If you have, good. If not, next time you catch one, check one out. Suffice it to say they're important and I'll come back to them a little bit later on. Let's just say for now it's with a combination of the nose and the barbules that a carp's able to track its food back to the point of origin even in the most murkiest of waters. So why have I been saying smell taste? Well, I'm not sure that a carp actually understands and is able to separate the difference. Um, we might be labelling them purely and simply because we detect one with the mouth and we detect one with the nose. But a carp receives information like that all the time. It's I'll give you an example in the human sense of uh, the words. If you walk past a really good Indian restaurant or a takeaway and you can smell that food and taste it at the same time, you get that, what I might call the aroma of it all. It's kind of like smelling with your mouth. Like, that's it, that's how a carp gets its food all the time. So is it able to split the difference between one and the other? Or is it more a case of, that tweaks my dinner nipples, I really must eat that thing right now? Only a carp really knows. 
like I said at the beginning, a carp seems to be designed to get as big and as fat as, as possible. <clears throat> and they've invested a lot of evolution points in themselves to be able to achieve this. Well, here's why. Okay, So to start with, a carp's got a lot more receptors than the majority of the other fish out there. And it seems to use them in quite unique ways. Now, for the kids listening, the receptors are like little cells that are designed to pick up certain things and they're fine-tuned to pick up certain things. So to get big and fat as possible you've not just got to be able to be good at finding food, you've got to be good at finding good food. Food with a, a high calorie count, um, something that provides all the vitamins and minerals that you might require to not only stay healthy but to get bigger. Studies strongly suggest that carp are able to, to not only sense and detect smell taste but also the nutritional qualities of the food source in a sort of similar way to the way that we might pick a packet of food up and turn it over and read the analytical breakdown on the back of the packet. Carp don't have stomachs as such and um, they have like a massive intestine that goes from top to bottom uh, and this particular evolutionary development allows food to stay in a, an area a lot longer to get processed as it passes down the entire length rather than just sitting in the stomach. This has given the carp the ability to digest a larger variety of food sources than a lot of other fish out there, which means they can make greater use of things like carbohydrates. <clears throat> studies and experiments that have been carried out prove that carp will pass over a strong smelling empty bait in order to pick up and selectively dine on more substantial, less flavoured baits. So when I say empty bait, I mean that it's not carrying a great deal of nutritional value. A carp not only seems to know what it wants and needs, but also what sort of what sort of good for it. And they're able to do this by using the nostrils, as I spoke about earlier. So it's back to the nostrils in the flaps. A carp uses these nostrils to push water down a U-bend in the snout, at the bottom of which the water hits like a rosette of chemoreceptors. And they're designed to pick out and, and analyse the composition of the food source. Once it's um, done that, then the carp will decide whether it's worth eating or not. And that's why we put so much effort into our ingredients of our base mix to make sure that we've got the best possible. So if I give you a little example, um, if it was just to run 100 grams of soy flour, I'll use soy because it's used in the majority of um, boiler creation, run 100 grams of soy flour through the carp's hardware, it might come back like calories 434 uh, kilocals, fat 21%, carbs 32%, proteins 38%, blah 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 blah. But I doubt it's that sort of precise. Probably more comes back like calorie count mediocre, fats average, carbs average, protein average, food source average, yeah something more along those sort of lines but it's got a means of detecting those sort of things that's all we really need to know so now we know that carp are designed to eat what else do we know well simple fact of life is that if a creature wants to get bigger it's got to intake more calories than it uses up so again for the kids out there kids if you think of your body like a fire and your fire of your body burns logs for fuel right? and it might burn, just for the sake of this explanation, one log a day but you take on two logs so each day you eat one log, put one log to side eat one log, put one log to side and that log pile that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger that sort of represents the fish getting bigger and bigger and bigger because it's got enough logs to be able to do that so try to pack as many calories into each of those boilies as possible the higher the calorie count the more interested the carp's likely to be in your bait. Second, carp are known as grazers. Grazers means that it moves around its environment eating at various different spots. Now it's mostly doing this because the carp's body needs certain vitamins and minerals and it has to go to certain places to get each of those things. One thing that we do know about most creatures out there, ourselves included, is that most creatures are lazy and would rather go to one place to get everything they need rather than to have to move around their environment to gather it all up. So knowing this means that we should try to include as many of the essential nutrients that a carp needs so it doesn't need to move on. 
because it's essential, those nutrients, and really that's the only thing that's going to make it move on. Ask yourself a question. How does a one carp get bigger than another carp? Given yeah, that both carp, born from the same parents, born at the same time, live in the same water, and both the same size when we start. In there. I'll give you a second to think about that. While you're thinking about it, please press the subscribe, hit the like, make a little comment at the bottom. Time up. The answer isn't purely one carp's DNA says grow bigger than the other one. Right? Because on its own that doesn't really work. To grow bigger requires lots of things from detecting and locating the food to avoiding predators, all that sort of stuff comes in involved. And that, you know, that's just to name a few. No, the long and short of it is, it all boils down to selection. Both fish are the same size, and as such you've got like the same size intestinal tract, capable of holding X amount of food. One fish gets bigger than the other simply by selecting a better food source to fill that space with, and travel less whilst doing it. So for each square inch of space inside the intestine, one fish will be getting around 100 calories per square inch, while the other is getting around 80 calories per square inch. This will in turn will make it harder and slower for the second fish to gain size and weight. Once the first fish has gained size and weight, it can use this to secure spots on the best feeding locations, which then ensure the continuation of increase of both size and weight. So it's kind of a perpetual circle. This comes into play once the smallest of, of differences have been made by one fish over the other. One fish is slightly bigger and heavier than the other. It can use that to its advantage. And when it starts to use that to its advantage, this becomes self-rewarding. Self-rewarding means the more you do it, the more it benefits you. So in turn, you do it more. So the big heavy fish keeps pushing the other fish out of the way, keeps getting bigger and heavier. All right? The third thing to think about is, studies have also shown that a carp's digestive system is, is severely affected by its environment. So in cold waters, below sort of 7 degrees, a carp's digestive system slows right down and it sort of struggles to, di to digest proteins and fats. And it will it'll tip its diet, if it eats at all, it will tip its diet towards more carbohydrates than anything else. As the water warms up in the spring and the summer and moving on through to the autumn, carp's digestive system starts to work better and better and then it tips back in favour of proteins and fats above carbohydrates. Generally speaking, carp need to eat around 12 grams of protein per kilogram of their body weight and this roughly equates to around 40-45% to 45 protein in the diet. Studies of carp's feeding preferences have also revealed that they perform well with dietary levels of fat between 10 and 15%, and a level of carbohydrates ranging between 30 and 35%. This all changes in cold water, dropping protein and fat levels in favour of the more easily digestible carbohydrates. A good bait should mirror these requirements, providing a carp everything that it needs as well as wants, remembering all the time that what it wants is calories, vitamins and minerals. Including vitamins and minerals will help ensure that the carp doesn't need to move on to find something essential that its body is craving. So in most cases, external factors aside, that meaning you've scared the fish or something else has scared the fish away, so in most cases, the reason carp move away from a food source is because it requires slash needs something that that food source isn't providing. So it needs to move on because that thing is essential. The most essential, as well as often the most difficult thing for any wild creature to locate enough of, is often vitamins and minerals. Calories can be kind of got from anywhere. So it's the carp's essential need for these vitamins and minerals that's going to force them to move on to find them should your baits not contain them. Studies have also shown that when carp are kept at their optimum temperatures, they're really quite partial to protein and they'll seek it out over all other food groups. Remember, this is only once the carp's body is up and awake and operating at 100%. In the colder months, in the colder water, then they'll seek out a more carbohydrate-heavy diet. Now it's important not to get nutrition and flavour confused. One doesn't necessarily relate to the other. So a bread cob 
covered in lobster flavour, still has almost the same nutritional value as the plain bread cob, but it smells really strongly of lobster. If you take that same bread cob and use it to create a lobster sandwich with all the accoutrements, you're going to get a much higher nutritional value, but it might not smell as strong. Remember, carp can sort of taste and analyse your bait without putting it in their mouth. Just because it smells like lobster doesn't mean it's going to be worth eating. You know, given the two choices, which would you go for? Cob covered in lobster sauce or lobster sandwich with accoutrements? Yeah, I know which one I'd have. I hope I made it clear just how important it is to have a good bait. So for us a good bait should include as many essential nutrients as required by the carp as possible. If you're buying it, it needs to stick together whilst you catapult it or stick it out. If you're making it, it needs to roll well too. Boiler composition is dictated by ingredients and cooking time is the topic for another video. So folks, if you've got this far, please remember to like, subscribe and share as that really helps the channel out. That's it for now. Until the next time, thanks for listening and I hope you found it interesting as well as useful. Catch you later folks. Bye.